Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofinet, the babbling Belgian M. Look at this! Gwent, the Witcher card game, has been finally released uh, last week, if this uh, when this episode comes out, but uh, this week for me. Uh, and on consoles, that is, because of course I'm a poor console peasant, and the PC crowd have been uh, getting this update, I think, about a month and a half ago. But finally, finally, I and everybody on console can play it now as well. So Gwent, the Witcher card game, has been completely reworked. Uh, compared to what it was before. So let's head in. And uh, what I want to do today is just, because uh, it's been a while since I did anything Witcher or Gwent related on the channel, now that, because I wanted to wait for this. So uh, this week, we'll also start our playthrough in Thronebreaker, of which I already recorded two episodes. But today, I wanted to do a bit of an introduction back to Gwent and just take a look at what the game has become. We'll uh, look at that, welcome back. I haven't done anything of that, so let's just continue on. There we go. And as you can see, it looks completely different as it did before, than it did before. So uh, we still have the same bits and pieces here and there, so we can play, we can play Arena, we can play Thronebreaker, but that just pulls us out of the game, because Thronebreaker and Gwent are actually two separate games from now on. So uh, Thronebreaker is a single player campaign, but whatever you do in Thronebreaker actually gets you rewards in this game as well. Then you have the deck builder and the shop with Shoop the Troll, of course. So, uh, the first thing I want to do today is what we're going to do for the entire episode, I think, is just talk about what changed, because uh, I've played a few games already. And mainly, we're going to just start opening some kegs, because if you look in the top right you can actually see i have 25 kegs available just because of all the rewards i've got i haven't played that much yet it's just because of uh the fact that it kind of recycles everything you had because you lose every card you had in the beta but uh, as you can see i have a humongous amount of card scraps so the second number the 130,000 card scraps are the, the, the card scraps I got because the game just dismantled all my cards I had from the beta because pretty much every card has changed so there, I think there's barely any card now that does exactly the same thing as it did in the beta uh, but just to give you an idea how many card scraps that is you need 800 card scraps to create a gold card so with that I can do about uh, a little under one, a little over 150 gold cards, uh, and the left number is uh, ore as we're used to, and the third number is meteorite dust, which allows us to make uh, animated cards. But uh, that's basically it. It did bring over my level, as you can see in the top left. There's also a secondary level, which I'm not really sure yet what that actually does. Ah, 25 has been my highest ranking in any of the rankings uh, before. And uh, maybe something first we can check out. So they've done, they've done something really cool reward-wise. So once you start uh, playing and doing certain challenges, you get reward points. And based on that, those reward points, you can go into any of these characters and faction icons and each of those has a reward tree in which you can spend your reward points and then you get certain rewards based on the amount of points you can actually use and what node uh, you're at. So as you can see each faction uh, tree allows you to unlock the three extra leaders because now there's four leaders per faction, you can check that out. So Skellige has of course Croc on Crate, Harald the Cripple, Grand Tweersock and Ace Tweersock, which is, I think, a character that only exists in the books. Then for the Squiatel, we have Phila Vandrel, Francesca Findabear, Etne, and Bruver Hog. Then for Nilfgaard, we have Emperor Emir Var Embries, of course. Then Morvron, Morv Morvron, those, those, those consonants right next to each other, it's so confusing. Morvron Vorhis. Then the Usurper, and of course Jan Calvate, which is actually a character that's only mildly mentioned in the books uh, as a potential follow-up on Emir. Then the Northern Realms have Ada, with of course the monsters. Then uh, King Foltest, King Demavent, and King Henselt. And the monsters, last but not least, have of course Eredin, the leader of the Wild Hunt, the Arakas Queen, the Unseen Elder and the Woodland Spirit. So a few extras here and there. And then the tutorial, I've done that already. 
is actually a nice little story with uh, full voiceover from Geralt and Dandelion. And then the uh, seasons have not yet started on the console version, so we don't have anything competitive yet to do. But those will also have their own reward tree. So, first things first, I also have a lot of ore, so I think I might actually use that ore in the shop. So let's head towards uh, Shoop. Shoop. 20 cards, lots, all kinds. This actually gives me an opportunity to talk about the first big difference in Gwent now that it's released. It actually uses a 3D engine now instead of a purely 2D engine. So that's why Shoop looks a bit different and I must say a bit more creepy. But uh, yeah, he's actually now a fully 3D modeled character, but they kind of kept the same aesthetic with the kind of cell shading, the comic book style uh, well, rendering, and that's basically it. It also uh, comes back into the games. I might do one little game if I get the chance, but I haven't really built a proper deck yet. Uh, the few games I did was just for trying out. But uh, we can actually buy stuff here. So let's check out card kegs. What a fancy, a fancy animation of its own. And I think, yeah, it's the same price. So 100 ore for a single keg. Let's just buy, how many, how many, how much ore do I have? I think it was, yeah, 1400. So I'm going to buy 10. Because ore is also used to buy uh, mirror shards to get into the arena mode. So let's just buy those. And that will give me a bit of... Uh, extra kegs for in what's going to be the main draw of this episode so we're going to leisurely open up a few kegs to see what we can get and what i can uh well just gather around what's with the bundles i haven't actually checked out bundles yet Ooh. so northern realms bundle this bundle is themed around the northern realms and contains a lyria board demovan skin ally of lyria and count caldwell avatar and those costs 1200 meteorite Shh. Shards, no dust. Mahakam and the Invaders. So those come with their own board skins. Which is actually cool. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. But still, nicely we can buy those. Uh, and then packs, we can't do anything with that. And then Throne Break, I think, won't do us any good either. So I'm guessing they turn Meteorite Powder into their premium currency a bit. Although... I think the card kegs we could buy directly, yeah, you could buy packs directly. But, let's get back and start opening some kegs. Because uh, with the kegs, we'll uh, go through the different changes that have been made to a few of the abilities. And uh, yeah, without further ado, yep, here we yep, go. Yep. Must smash, smash. Shoop, show. Yep, okay, Shoop. So we have 35 kegs. Uh, premium base set keg. Once open this keg, will, will grant you 5 premium cards, 4 of which are of at least common rarity. Hmm. Wonder how I got those. So it's supposed to be premium weak as well. So normally every keg I open will have at least one animated card. So let's open this and look at that. The new animation for Shoop. It was a bit short. So uh, let's reveal Diamond Rhythm Shackles. Now lock a unit and damage it by three, which is pretty much the same thing as it did before. Then we have Arakas Vanage, Venom, damage a unit by 3. If it was destroyed, damage its adjacent units by 3. So, if the first uh, prerequisite works, it does the same thing as it did before. Otherwise, it does not. So, that's a big change. Then we have the Uncrate Warcryer. Deploy boost self by the amount an enemy is damaged. So, that is different. Because I think the Warcryer did... Could just double up the health of a damaged unit, I think that was... And that was on your side and not an enemy. And then we have the Wild Hunt Navigator. Deploy, boost an allied unit by one. If you control the highest unit, boost by three instead. So that is different. Because the Navigator usually... I think that could uh, create a duplicate of one of your active units. If you had one. And then there we go. Animate the cards. The Assassination damage unit by 6, so the Assassin now changed into a Tactic card instead of a Unit card. Decrease the damage by 1 for each unit adjacent to it. So, if the unit is alone, you do 6 damage. If there are more enemies surrounding that unit, you lose more and more damage. And the Brockfar Archer, deploy range damage an enemy by the amount of damaged units on their side. Also different. Then the three times one damage we could do with it before. And then the Kedweni Cavalry. 
Deploy on melee, remove all charges from an enemy, then damage it by the amount removed. So charges are new. So charges, uh, I can't explain charges without explaining the new um, the new category uh, order as well. Because order is a subset of deploy kind of. It gives you an ability that you can only use in the next turn after you've played the card. And you can choose when you use that ability. So an order ability allows you to use an, that ability at a later stage in the fight as well when it suits you and each order unit can have multiple charges so depending on how much how many charges the unit has uh, that unit can deploy that ability multiple times or not charges can be restored but can also be removed by uh for example the Kedweni cavalry so i think i'm gonna go for the brock for archer just because i'm used to scaligan mostly so let's just go with that and there we go five or five cards and we explained already what order and charges are so let's open up the next keg <laughs> there we go four more cards mahakam ale boost the unit by four and remove its lock so there we go another difference because it usually just did uh three units on separate rows also by four, I think, boosted, but uh, then we have the Blue Mountain Elite, deploy damage and ooh, only one. So yeah, you might have noticed already the numbers have lowered uh, significantly based on the previous uh, iteration of Quent. So the numbers have all lowered a bit to just give them a bit more of a... Because they balance the entire game and every single card. Because you might have also noticed there are no silver cards anymore. There are only bronze and gold cards. And the only limit you have is the total number of, uh, I think it's called unit capacity, uh, you can use in a deck. And that is defined by that number in the lower right. So the Blue Mountain Elite would use up 4 unit capacity, the Markham Ale would use up 5 unit capacity. But damage an enemy by 4 if there are no other units on its row. So pretty bad card to be honest. It's going to use it if there are no other units and the reach is only one which means that it can't even reach the... So the reach means uh, the amount of rows it can br bridge to perform that attack. So um, another big change was that they removed the middle row. So now you only have uh, the back row. So you have, now you only have ranged and melee. Uh, but that means reach one means that you can only put it on the melee row if you want to use that ability and only on units on the other side's melee row. So, not that good of a card. Uh, Trident Infantry, whenever this unit receives a boost, damage a random enemy by one. Could be handy if a boost, if there's a boost heavy deck in there. And then the Armorsmith, boost an ally by one if it's a warrior, boost it by three instead. So again, a prerequisite to get it to boost the tree. And then our next card, the Kedweni Cavalry we saw. Then we have the Impera Brigade. Summon a copy of this unit from your deck to this row. Interesting. So that's kind of like similar cards we've seen before. And then the Dolblatana Bowman. Damage an enemy by one for each row that separates it from this unit. So if you attack somebody in the back from the back, you get three damage out of this. But still not, still not the best card. Um, I think... You know what, we've, we've gotten it uh, two times now already, so let's go with the Cat Winnie Cavalry. There we go. There we go. And then our next one. So yeah, the removal of one of the rows, it makes you think that it, it, it makes the game easier or more simple. But it really doesn't because of the, the addition of the Reach modifier and the uh, Order. Uh, modifier that you can have on your deploy abilities, but uh, more on that later. Damage an enemy by one for each boosted unit on this row. Hmm, and reach two. That's actually good to get with the other infantry cards. Then the Sage, whenever you play a special card, boosts self by two. Which is also different, because I think the Sage used to allow you to put a spell card from your graveyard and then discard it immediately after you've used it. Ice Giant, just a straight up 7 power with no ability. Could be nice, could be nice. Then the Hay May Protector. Whenever an adjacent unit takes damage, boost itself by 1. Huh. Knowing Skalaga, that can actually give you a bit of an advantage there. 
It's an interesting card. Then the Twirsock... Twirsock Veteran. Damage self by four. So that used to be that it strengthened itself and all copies of itself, all Twirsock units, by one. And now it's just... It damages self by four. But of course, with base eight, it could be healed back up to eight. Interesting. Then the winch, play a bronze machine from your graveyard, so just a resurrection for machine. Machines, then the Dolblet on a Bowman, we saw that already, so I think we're gonna go for the veteran. Yeah, I'm biased towards Skellige, so uh, I do apologize about, for that beforehand. And now we see how many cards we have, actually I missed that icon before, how many cards we have for that type already, so open up next gag. First one is a Skellige card, the Savage Bear. Deploy, gain one charge for each Savage Bear in the graveyard. Order, damage a unit by two and one charge. But you gain one charge for each Savage Bear in the graveyard. So depending on how many bears you've used, you gain more charges. Uh, Zeal is another modifier you haven't seen yet. The Zeal means that you can use the order immediately. So normally order... Uh, forces you to wait one turn before you can use the ability. Zeal uh, allows you to use that ability immediately, but since they need to have a distinction between the deploy uh, ability and the order ability, they added Zeal to give you an order that you, can that you can use immediately. Still not forced to use it immediately, it just allows you to use it immediately. Then we have the scout, deploy, remove a row effect from this unit's row. Oh, that's cool. So that's removing body effects now. Then the reinforced trebuchet, ranged every turn on turn end, damage a random enemy on the ranged row. That's a specifier, otherwise it would have been the same thing. By one. Okay, otherwise it's pretty much the same thing. Then hawker support, deploy, boost an ally by one. If you control an artifact, boost by three instead. So again, a conditional booster. Woody. And then we get the Gutting Slash, so that's the Uncrate Warrior that's now um, an artifact card. Damage unit by 4, Bloodthirst 2, damage a unit by 6 instead. So Bloodthirst, again, a different modifier than we've seen before. Bloodthirst means that you need to have um, that amount of damaged enemies on the other side. So that amount of damaged enemies. So Bloodthirst 2, for example, means you need to have at least two damaged enemies for the damage to go to six instead of four. And then the Vryhead Brigade, damage a random enemy by two. Whenever Vryhead Brigade is moved to the other row, repeat its deploy ability. That could be interesting. And then Epidemic, destroy the lowest units. And that's pretty much the same thing, I think. But pretty high unit consumption. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the Vryhead Brigade. There we go. And on to the next one. Yeah, the, the animation, I feel like the, the previous animation was better. The Temerian Drummer, order boost an ally by one and give it zeal. So that means... Oh, that's interesting. So because you can give an ally zeal, because order means you can't use it on the same turn. So you could put an ally down, if the drummer is on the field, you can put an ally down with order and make it use that order immediately if you want to. Then the battering ram, deploy if you control a soldier, destroy an enemy artifact. Again a condition, but of course, you have a lot of soldiers in the Northern Realms deck. Ooh, that is purple. Then the diamond rhythm shackles again, we've seen that. Then the Twirsock skirmisher. When this unit is discarded, summon it from your graveyard to the melee row. Okay, so when it's discarded, summon it from your graveyard to the melee row. So that's kind of replacing the pirates from... That's weird that they changed that. So the Skirmisher used to uh, become stronger every time it went to the graveyard. So you could resurrect it stronger every time. But now... Ooh, gold cards, gold cards. Hefty Helge. So that was in the game already. I think most of them we've seen so far were already in the game. Hefty Helge. Damage an enemy by two. It is immune. And you can order it to damage an enemy by two for each soldier on this row. Each soldier on this row. So yeah... So it, it points towards the soldiers that are actually on the same row as the machine itself, so they kind of operate it. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Weavis, boost an ally by two, increase this boost by two whenever you play Wispus or Brewers. Does that mean it works retroactively? So if you play Wispus and then Brewers, the boosts that you gave just goes up. And then Cyprian Wiley is now a gold card instead of a silver card. 
banish a unit with 3 power or less. And banish means that it just disappears from the game, but I think you know you knew that already. So I think Cyprian Wiley is even factionless, yeah. I think gold does, does mean that it's not on a faction. Let's go with Weavers. Just want to see if I can uh, gather all the, the witches. So let's go into our next cag. And that was our first gold card. That was our first gold card. So, hey, may herbalist deploy ranged heal an ally by two, then boost it by two. That could be very strong, potentially. So that's basically a simple healer, but boosting effect added to it as well. Clear skies, we know what that is. The Doppler, deploy, choose a unit in your hand and boost self by the total number of units in your hand, which have the same primary category as that unit. Ah, so if you have a lot of soldiers, for example, in your hand, you can use the Doppler to just, for example, if you have eight soldiers in your hand, you boost the Doppler by eight. Interesting. Could be very strong, actually. Lyrian Cavalry, Human Soldier. Whenever you play a unit with orders, boost out by one. Kind of works towards that Northern Realm army. I do love how they, for now at least, for the cards I've seen, they, they do keep to the faction rules a bit. Then we have the Foglet. Summon a copy of this unit from your deck to a random, random allied row. So that means it's that wish, so it only happens when the Foglet dies. Which means that the Foglet kind of took on the role of the Necker now, which is weird. Gold Frot boosts all units on a row by two. It's very high because it's an immediate boost on everything on a row by two. And it's not a weather effect anymore, which is interesting. Then the Blue Stripes Commando summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. So that's the same thing. But yeah, it might be strong because of the... Because the power is the same as it was before, so... Might want to start gathering that. Yeah, let's start gathering some blue straps commandos. Ointment boost the bronze soldier by two and repeat its deploy ability. Could be powerful. Could be very powerful. It's not as powerful as it was before because you could just get a... Uh, I think you could resurrect a unit with this, right? And then combined with the uh, the Viper School Witches, that would have been uh, very strong. So Cat Winnie Knight is the same as it was before, I think. Played from the deck, boost self by four. The Bowman we've seen. And then the Dimmon Pirate Captain, Bloodthirst two. So again, we need two damaged enemies. Damage an enemy by three. Hmm, very conditional to only get to six. So let's get with the Cat Winnie Knight. There we go, next one. So yeah, basically, I feel like the game gives you more options to, well, just put a, a game to your hand uh, with the order and zeal and stuff like that with the charges to more focus on cards interconnecting than big, powerful cards that stand on their own. Torrential Rain, apply this row effect to an enemy row for four turns. So weather effects are now temporary. So four turns. On turn start, damage two random units on the road by one. So that's pretty much the same thing. I do like a bit of weather effects. Although the Kedweni Revenant is too powerful to leave. Because it might be really cool. So there we, you can see the contracts I'm completing. Those give us reward points we can use later on in those uh, reward trees. So let's open up the next deck. Let's, let's see. Thrive. Boost this unit by one whenever an ally with higher, higher power is played. Aha. Uh -huh. Whenever an ally with higher power is played, but 4 is already pretty high for this, for the new Gwent. And a Cyclops deploy destroy an adjacent allied unit and damage an enemy by its power. So that's pretty much the same thing. Aside from the fact that the reach has been reduced. Ooh, Adrenaline Rush, give or remove resilience from a unit. So that's pretty much the same thing aside from the fact that you can now also remove it. And I hadn't seen resilience yet, so that's still there as well. And then another Blue Stripes Commander. Well, I said we were going to start collecting those, so there we go. Uh, and then the Uncreate Greatsword. Whenever an enemy on the opposite road takes damage, boosts itself by one. So definitely not as strong as it was before, but still one of my favorite cards. So let's just go with the Greatsword. Because the Greatsword along with the ships were a really powerful combo. And now we have another gold card! Ooh, and three nice ones. So, Jennifer Conjurer, damage the highest enemy units by one every turn on order. So, it's a cooldown of one turn. So, that's really, really powerful. Then, Priscilla, 
Give unit one charge. Hmm. So you can keep giving units charges. That is cool. And now Whispers Tribute. Play an organic card from your deck. So ranged means that you need to put it on the ranged row for it to work. So play an organic card from your deck. That could be powerful as well. But I'm hesitating between Yennefer and Priscilla. I do like damaging decks. And since I want to make a Skellige deck that's pretty damaging, I'm going to go for Yennefer. There we go, our second golden card. And then another gold card. There are, ooh, and there's Priscilla again. Schillard Fitz Esterlin. Deploy set the power of the highest unit in your opponent's hand to one in the hand. That is brutal. Burn a brand, draw two cards, then discard two cards, which is really nice for, of course, uh, Skellig decks. Especially discard decks. Um, and now we have Priscilla. We know what she does. I'm gonna go for Priscilla. I was hesitating before, but let's just get that lovely woman in our collection as well. The card, the card, not the, not the woman herself. And then purple. Shiny. So Eleas, damage all damaged units by one and boost all boosted units by one. Interesting. That could work in your favor or not. And I must say that Succubus in the background looks even more horny than it looked before. Full test Sprite, order melee damage an enemy and all other enemies with power equal to it by one. So that's pretty much the same thing as the Ballista did before, I think. But now in a gold card, that's interesting. It has one charge. So you can only use it in the next turn, which is, hmm. Painful. And then the Dalsbog runestone is pretty much the same thing as it did before. So create and play a bronze Nilfgaard card. Not that interesting. So I think I might go for, hmm, Eleas? I think I'm going for, it. yeah, I'm going for Eleas. There we go, another gold card. And that means we're through our original kegs. I'm going to leave the gold kegs for last, of course. And go for our uh, faction-specific kegs, so Northern Realms kegs. The first one. Trebuchet, damage unit by one. If it was destroyed, damage unit is adjacent to it by one. Nothing really interesting. I have most of the cards, so let's just go with the Siege Tower. Boost adjacent allies by one. And it's an order, so you can do that multiple times if you have more charges. So, open the next keg. Nothing really new aside from the Siege Support, which gives two charges to a machine ally, which is really, really cool. And then another gold card. Prince Tennis, boost an ally by two and give it one charge. So that's different from the armor it could get. He could get before, but still pretty powerful. Boost an ally by two and give it a charge. Sabrina's Inferno, damage each non-spectre unit by one. If any were destroyed, repeat this ability once. So basically, Stammel Fort Strammer that works on the entire board, aside from spectre units. But it can happen twice if you destroy anything with it. And then Margarita Lo Until. Zeal. Spend three charges to lock an enemy unit. Interesting. So if you manage to get her to three charges again, you can do that again. I think Prince Stannis is the more useful card here. So there we go. That was that were our two uh, Northern Realms cards. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. I opened one of the gold. Oh no, that's the Nilfgaards. That's the Nilfgaardian ones. Boost an ally by two whenever you reveal this card. Boost a random ally by two. Alba Spearman, damage an enemy by two. Increase the damage by one for each adjacent soldier. Combat Engineer, if you control an artifact, boost out by three. And Slave Driver, damage an enemy by two. Increase damage by one for each locked unit. And gold wow, cards, wow. more gold cards. Stefan Skellen, the well, one of the major bad guys in the well. There's actually two major bad guys from the books in here. Stefan Skellen, if this unit is on the battlefield, spawn and play a copy of a tactic card you played during this turn. So, basically, if Stefan Skellen is on the board and you play a um, tactic card, you can order Skellen to use the same tactic again. Then Letho. Remove all redraws from the enemy leader. Huh. So all the mulligans, yeah, the mulligans have changed as well. So now 
uh, every player has three mulligans across the entire game. So if you choose at the beginning to not redraw any cards, you can do so in the beginning of round two or round three with the same amount of charges. If you use it once, you can use two redraws in the next turn and so on and so forth. Uh, and then we have Vilger Forts, of course, the big bad guy from the, uh, the books. Deploy melee, destroy an enemy unit. Then your opponent summons the top unit from the deck to a random enemy row. And if you're on the ranged, it does the same thing but on your side. Destroy an allied unit. You can choose what you destroy, so that could be cool. That could be really cool. Although Scallon might be the more interesting one here. Hmm. Although I like, I like, I like the card of Vilja Forts. Look at that. Let's just go with that. There we go. And let's open up our... You know what? I'm just going to go back for a second. Yeah, it's our Nilf Guardian cards. Ah, there we go. The Viper Witcher. Change to reveal the top card from your opponent's deck and banish it. Okay. So it's not as powerful as it was before. Because it used to do uh, the amount of alchemy cards you had in your deck as damage. Which could be, which could be a lot. Usually about 12 or 13 damage if you focus your deck onto it. And then the Armored Cavalry lock an enemy unit. Let's go with the Viper Witcher, just because. And now our premium base set kegs. Once opened, this card will grant you five premium cards, four of which are at least of common rarity. So all of these will have animations. There we go. So Nilfgaard, look at that. All animated, all lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm gonna go through these a bit faster because I think we've seen pretty much everything we could see now. The Cursed Knight may be transform an allied unit that is not a Cursed Knight into a Cursed Knight without changing its power. Hmm, interesting. You know what? I want that. I want a zombie on a horse. There we go, zombie on a horse. Aha, there we have another interesting card. The Mask of Disguise. Swap this unit's power with an enemy's power. So that could be very powerful. Let's get that in there. So I'm skipping through a few because uh, we started to see more duplicate cards. So let's keep going. Oh, we start getting gold cards. Now I have two gold cards in the same pack. It was a bit quiet in the last uh, five kegs or something like that. We did get a Siren, which boosts the Death Wish ally by three. Then we have Vrygev. Trigger the deployabilities of adjacent bronze soldiers. That is really cool. And I'm going to check this again for the third time. Shiny. Giant Boar, deploy melee, boost self by one for every damage unit. Then Ala the Striga, of course, the Striga herself from uh, both the games and the books. If you control the highest unit, damage an enemy by five, but only if you control the highest unit. Then Operator, spawn and summon its base copy of a bronze unit from your hand to this row on each player's side. Uh, you know, I'm a sucker for Skalagus, so let's just go with the Giant Boar. And then I think, yeah, it's my last keg, so let's let's savor this last keg. A Nilfgaard Fire Scorpion, a Dun... Ooh, it's a gold card. My last one is a gold card. And yeah, the rest we've seen already. So now... A Vernon Roach. Play the top two cards from your deck. Ooh. So that's basically Dijkstra. Then Lambert. Destroy an enemy with resilience. That is also cool. And Stefan Scallon again. Turn and Roach is awesome. They're all awesome, by the way. They're, all three of them are awesome. But I feel like Vernon Roach is a more powerful card here. So let's get that. And there we go. That's basically everything I have in here. That was 35 kegs all in a row. I hope you guys enjoyed that a bit. Because it might have taken a bit. Because I cut it down quite... Uh, Quite a lot, but uh, still, there was a lot. So let's see what uh, challenges we've completed. So one reward point for opening 10 kegs. And then we have one reward point for spending 100 ore. Two reward points for spending 1000 ore. And that's pretty much it. So we got four more uh, reward points. And that basically, it's, it's pretty simple. So you can just select any character you have unlocked. So for example, if I go to Aradin over here, you can see his tree looks completely different than the other trees and you can get stuff from the tree. 
So for example, this one, I need one reward point and I get 50 ore from that. For this one, I get 100 ore, but I need two reward points. So basically, pretty straightforward. Um, and you just highlight them and you just go. And you need the previous notes to, of course, activate one of the further ones. There's also notes with story points. Uh, and I think that's based on um, what's happening in Thronebreak. I'm not exactly sure. Unless there is something on the play that I haven't seen before. And then to end it off, I'm going to do a little practice round just to show you how this works. So I'm using the basic monster deck here. I haven't made anything fancy myself just yet. So uh, first off, you only you have four redraws. I was wrong before. It's uh, four mulligans instead of three. Uh, but you only have those for the entire game. So there we go. Another thing they've added is that the person who starts actually has another advantage and gets the tactical advantage, which you can use once to boost one ally by five. Uh, so let's just start pretty high up and start with a werewolf. There we go. You also need to manually end your turn now, since you can order units whatever you want. So, whenever you play a unit with Death Wish trigger, it's Death Wish ability. That is really powerful, holy crap. So let's just put the bear down and end the turn, because I don't want to actually use too many cards, especially against that card. Death Wish destroyed the, lo the lowest enemy. Okay, I am gonna pass. I actually don't know what Eridan's ability is, so boost the unit by 3 and give it immune. And there we go, it completely destroyed. What the hell was that? I haven't seen a lot of those cards yet. Consume an enemy unit. So let's just use Eskel. I'm gonna suppose that the two other cards are in the deck. There we go, Shit. and that. So now we have nine points. Consume an allied unit, there we go. And that gives us an Arakas drone. Which I think is an ability, yeah. Whenever an allied unit is destroyed during your turn, spawn an Arrakis drone and summon it to a random allied row. So the Arrakis queen will keep pulling out uh, Arrakis drones. So, you're, uh, so that means that your leader can also have passive abilities. Um, but that's basically it. So let's just use the ghoul. So I need to put it on the melee row. And then just consume my Elder Bear. And there we go. I think I'm not going to win this, but at least it was a bit of a showcase because I'm, I'm using basic decks here, so... Why not? They boost unit by 6 and the turn. So he passed, which means I only need to do 4 points. So let's spawn those. Let's just put the Werewolf down. There we go. And then we can pass, and we get that round at least. And pr that's pretty much the same as before. So just the first one for two rounds wins. And then we have... Whew, not many, not much variety there. To boost all allies by one. That's actually not that bad compared with the Arakas Nest. So let's just... Yeah, okay. Okay, fair enough. So, we're definitely not going to win this. Because most of these guys actually have that wish abilities, which I really don't want to use. Well, there we go. We're 10 points ahead, but also two cards behind, so... Probably going to lose this one. Boosted that wish ally by 3. Why did that one get... Oh yeah, because of Thrive. So the only thing that doesn't have that wish is actually just a mermaid, so... Let's just fire away at that one, I, I, I assume. Because this one is going to come back. Yeah, let's just do that. But we probably lost. There we go. But now the uh, leaders are also completely in 3D. Ooh, there we go. Trigger bronze allies, that wish ability. And, ooh. And then, ooh, damn. That's a nice combo. A typical death wish deck, but still nice. There we go, we lost the round and lost the entire match. And there we go, Aridin just fucks off. <laughs> I 
I do love the animation. So each leader has their own animations for winning, losing, passing and stuff like that. So there we go. A first introduction to Gwent. I will be playing this a lot over the coming weeks and you'll start seeing more and more detailed videos about this because this was just an introduction to what has changed for the players that would use to the other games. So hope you guys enjoyed this little casual run through of the new Gwent and uh, the rest of the week will all be Gwent themed because we're going to go into the Thronebreaker DLC on uh, DLC. I, I call it the DLC, but it's a completely separate game. So the Thronebreaker single player campaign to Gwent and uh, that will start this week as well. So we look forward to those on Wednesday and on Friday, an episode each. So uh, see you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, see you guys in the next episode of Gwent. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.